All right, we're going to take a look at uh, chapter 3, uh, number 25 from Sapling. Um, this question is basically asking you about um, diaxial interactions. So they give you, I'm just going to draw it out as a flat structure first. And then I'm going to draw it out in chair conformations. So it's a pretty complicated one actually. Got a lot going on here. Okay, back. Went ahead and filled this all in. A uh, couple things to notice. All the wedges and hatches have to be outside the ring, right? If you put it inside the ring, it makes it unambiguous, so you can't do that. Make sure everything's outside the ring. Again, emphasizing um, if something's up, it's always up. If something's down, it's always down, right? So I can draw two different conformations for this ring structure, right? I could draw one where the chlorine is axial. I could draw another one where the chlorine is equatorial. I could do that with every single one of these. But that never changes the fact that this methyl right here is always on the same size as H. They're, all, they're always up. They're always down. They're not always axial or equatorial. They can, that's what the flip is. But no matter what, they're always the side they're on. If they're up, they're up. If they're down, they're down. Always. So to draw a chair, I'm just going to draw a first one. Parallel lines, parallel lines, parallel lines, parallel lines. Hope we're getting really good at this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw in all the positions. All right, why not? I always like to start up here. Axial up, equatorial down, axial down, equatorial up, axial up, equatorial down, axial down, equatorial up, axial up, equatorial down, axial down, equatorial up. I just like to draw them all in. Because every carbon still has an axial equatorial position. Just doesn't, it just matters what we put on there now. So I'm going to arbitrarily number these carbons. I'm going to say this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now I can, again, arbitrarily number any one of these carbons could be carbon 1. It doesn't matter. Right? I'm just going to pick this one to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So on carbon 1, I have a chlorine and a methyl. The methyl is up. The chlorine is down, so I, this is the down, right, equatorial then. And this is that CH3, so I'll leave this as a CH3. Put a CH3 up there. If we go to carbon 2, the H is up. So that would be the equatorial position on carbon 2 as it is right now. That means the F is axial, but down, right, the F is down. So keep going, the bromine is up on carbon 3. The H is down. The chlorine is down, the H is up on 4. On 5, the H is up, the OH is down. On 6, the F is up, right? the fluorine is equatorial, and the H is down. So the biggest part here was recognizing, right, the CH3, the H, the bromine, the H, the H, and the F are all up. That doesn't mean they're all axial equatorial, that means they're all up. Right? So if I started this as carbon 1, on carbon 1, the axial position is up. So that means that's where CH3 has to be. On carbon 2, the equatorial position up, that's where this H has to be. Right? And so on and so forth. Right? So that's just translating from here to here. Okay? Now at this point, you could ask yourself, okay, if I take CH3 as my reference point, that's in the axial position. Who is, what other groups is this CH3 having a diaxial interaction with? So which hydrogen on which carbon? On five. The hydrogen on five, that's correct, right? This hydrogen on five is also axial and up, right? So what I'm really asking is, this CH3 is axial. Who else is axial and up, right? Who else is it running into for, that's one, two, three carbons away? So yes, one, two, three, the H is axial and up, just like the CH3 is axial and up. And what else is axial and up? The bromine is also axial and up. So those, those three things, right, these three things are all having a diaxial interaction, right? That's bad, right? They don't want, you don't want that to happen, right? So you want to minimize those. So perhaps in this case, right, if I looked at all these substituents, which one's the biggest? The bromine. The bromine is. So do we want the bromine to be axial then? We probably want it to be equatorial. So maybe 
we should do a ring flip, right? Do a flip. And really, it, saying it's a flip is kind of a, it's, it's not really a flip as much as it is, right? One comes down, the headrest becomes the footrest, the footrest becomes the headrest. Everybody just kind of shifts over, right? So it's just a shift, right? So it was leaning to the right, now it needs to lean to the left. Most important part here is to renumber your carbons, right? Carbon one went down, carbon four went up. So those are the ones you know for sure. There's one and there's four. All right, you gotta remember how we numbered it. Then this is two, three, five, and six, right? Use one and four as your anchors so you know where things are at, right? Only things that are really, you know, one and four are moving up and down. Then again, you just fill in everything else, right? So everything that's up is still up, but it's, if it was axial now, it's equatorial. All right, so you can fill all these things in. I'll do all the positions first and do them fast. Again, these are things you should be practicing and just be able to do quickly. All right, fill all the positions in right away, which is easy. So what's on one? One had a CH3, and that's up, CL is down, 2 had the H up, the F down, 3 had the H down, the BR up, make sure I do these right, 4 had da, da, the chlorine down, H up, 5 had the OH down, now it's axial, H is equatorial and up, and 6 had the fluorine up and the H down. All right, if I do another, do another little exercise, let's say, what's diaxial to this H? What else is diaxial to that H? OH and the CL. The OH and the CL, good. Now it's on the bottom of the ring, but still, diaxial interactions there too, right? And this is better maybe, perhaps, because now our biggest group is equatorial, the, the bromine is, and our chlorine, one of the chlorines is as well, so that's good, right? Whereas here you had a bromine and a chlorine, axial, and those are pretty big elements you want those to be. Opposite. So when we're talking about diaxial interactions, we're talking about those things one, two, three, three carbons away that are axial on the same side. Axial on the same side. But right, good practice. Can you take this, draw this, and flip it to this? So it doesn't. I could have drew this one first just as easily. It would have been just fine. Right. All right. Let's talk about uh, hybridization states. Look at an example of something. So let's say. I have a ring, I have a nitrile, made up structures, Mm -mm. Lots of made-up stuff here. Um, oh yeah. So one exercise we could do is to go through and give the hybrid hybridization state, right? The actual hybrid state for every single element. All right. What's the hybrid state for every single element? And to ask to answer this question, what do you need to be looking for? For hybrid states, what do you need to look for? Pi bonds. Pi bonds, right? So you're looking for pi bonds. All right, the number of pi bonds you have will tell you how many for every pi bond you have, you have must have what? A p orbital. So pi bonds need p orbitals. So for every pi bond you have, you have at least one p orbital. Two pi bonds, two p orbitals. And that will tell you what state you're in. So if you have no, so no pi bonds, what hybrid state is that? SP3. SP3. Hybrid state we're talking about here. Not the orbitals yet, the hybrid state. If we have one pi bond, what hybrid state are we in? SP2. Again, 
hybrid state, not, not, right, not the actual hybrid uh, orbitals. If I have two pi bonds, what am I? SP. The sp hybrid state, right? The sp hybrid state. Good. Oops. Okay. So now, for each of these hybrid states, let's think about the orbitals necessary. All right. So if you're sp3, what hybrid orbitals do you have? You're always going to have four, right? Carbon has four bonds, right? That's what we're basing this all off of. So how many hybrid orbitals are you going to have? Four. And what are they? They're all sp3, right? So times four. And what do they look like? All right, they have a long and skinny, all right? I'm shading one part of the lobe, the bottom lobe. Does that mean that's where the electron's at? No, what's that? that? All this is saying is <laughs> electrons are like a wave, right? It's like the wave, part of the wave that's below the water. Think of it that way, right? And they're long and skinny. If I'm in the sp2 hybrid state, what hybrid orbitals do I have? For sure I have what? One p orbital. One p orbital. And p orbitals, of course, are the dumbbells. Right? You got to make sure they look different than the sp3s. Right? P orbitals look different. That's like an 8. And I filled in one of the bottom. I could have filled in the top. It doesn't matter. Right? Again, just like the waves. There's wave below the water and above the water. So there's one P. What else do we need? Three more then. What else do we have left? SP2. Do we need to have three times SP2s, right? And they're going to be a little more round right, than the SP3. Why? More S character, right? There's three parts, right? S and two P's. That's what they're made up of, right? There's three of them, so it's a little more S character, right? It's not as skinny, right? This one is 75% P. This one's 66% P. Or this one's 25% S, and this one's 33% S. So it's more round. Think of that way too. Okay. Now uh, the last one. Let's see. Shrink everybody down a little bit. Get out of the way. The last one, of course, is the sp hybrid state. That's what we talked about having right, two pi bonds. All right, so what, what, kind of, what kind of orbitals would it have, hybrid orbitals? 2p and 2sp. So we'll have two times p, which, right, the p orbitals look the same for everybody, right? And it'll have two times the sp. Now those guys are a little more fatter yet. Right? Because now they're half, 50% S, 50% P. Right? So they have shorter bond lengths than SP. Good. Now, so we got that figured out, hopefully. What if we, I'm going to shrink that back. Nope, maybe I'm not. What if I bring this back up? Let's take back a look at this. Go away. Take back a look at this big molecule, right? Let's just zoom in on this now. So there's all that stuff there. We got it. So how many examples of sp hybridized elements are there in this molecule? How many sp hybridized elements are there in this molecule? One. Sp. One. Three. One, two. Sp. Two pi bonds. SP, two pi bonds, and the nitrogen, SP, two pi bonds. All right? How many pi bonds is that? Take it a step further, the nitrogen has a lone pair, right? How many bonds does nitrogen want to have? Three. three. Does it have three? three. <laughs> but it also has a lone pair. Can anybody tell me what hybrid orbital that lone pair lives in? SP. In an SP, very good. I didn't draw the lone pair. I don't. You won't. You. I will not draw the. I won't draw the lone pairs in, and most time people won't either. If I do draw them in, I'll draw them all in correctly. I'll try. But if but if they're not drawn in, they're not drawn in. But that doesn't mean they're not there. It's just like saying, are there three H's out here? On, is there three H's out there on this, or is there three H's out here on this? 
There are. I just don't draw them in, but they're there. Is there a lone pair in this nitrogen? Oh, yeah. And two lone pairs in this oxygen? Yep. Just don't draw them in. Good. All right. Nomenclature question. Um, it's from similar as the sapling, chapter three type question. Um, so basically the first step is to find the longest chain. So take a second try to find the longest chain. Another thing you could do, if you're like me and you don't like the CH3, CH2, I would just redraw this as something that looked like this. And I would redraw it that way. All right, so what I'd like to do, I usually like to take take these and redraw them like this. Of course, then I messed this up. So this is just one bond. That's not a carbon there. That's one bond. Uh, longest continuous chain we had was, we said eight. Eight? Eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you with me on that one? So I like to lasso that in. That's eight. Now the question is, do we want a number from left to right or right to left? I think we want to do right to left, right? Because if we go right to left, we go one, two. There'd be a substitution on a two. This is one, two, three. So I think we want to go right to left to do our numbering. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's octane. It has, let's see, it has a methyl off carbon 2, so a 2-methyl, looks like it has 5,5-diethyl, there's two ethyls off 5, everybody see that? Nope, one's a propyl, I lied, 5-ethyl, five 5-propyl, five and it looks like 6-chloro. Right, so now we got to just get everything in alphabetical order, right? So what would go first? Chloro. So it would be 6-chloro, 5-ethyl, 2-methyl, 5-propyl, octane. 6-chloro. Right now it's just alphabetizing. Yeah. But uh, did you do like 5-methyl-propyl or did you just do... Nope. 6-chloro, six 2-methyl. Six <laughs> nope. 6-chloro. 5-ethyl, 2-methyl, 5-propyl, octane. You've got to separate them. You separate numbers. Like you separate. Only thing you bring together is when there's like diethyl. And there's yeah. two of the same substituents. Okay. Otherwise, you separate everything out. Okay, so let's take, let's take a look at two carboxylic acids. All right, carboxylic acids. And we'll do two parts to this question. We'll do one part where we think about which one has the greater <laughs> dipole moment. And then we'll also think about which one's going to be the actually more reactive acid. So let's label um, A and B. And let's start thinking about which one's going to have the greater dipole moment and why. So what I usually like to do is figure out what's the same and what's different. Right? So what's the same for both of these? They're, the OH is the same, right? Both of them have an OH. Very good. Carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid. What else is the same? Methyls, right? There's methyls too. And what's the different part? Fluorine versus chlorine. So then I look at the periodic table and say, what's the difference between fluorine and chlorine? Electronegativity and size. So when you're doing dipole moments, what's more important? Electronegativity is always the most important thing, right? Dipole. Just think about all dipole moments is about, it's all it's about is. Right? Bond polarity, making it polar. Fluorine, it's all about electronegativity. So which one of these is, do you think is going to be have a greater dipole moment, A or B? B should, right? They should be pulling more just because the, right? Every, these things are going to pull the same, right? OH and carboxylic acid are the same. This fluorine is going to pull more than that chlorine. Right? Notice, right, you can build a model, right? I just drew these wedges and hatches, right? Remember, these molecules are in three dimensions. I just kind of rotated things around. So don't get tripped up by that. Look at what's the same and what's different. Okay. So that makes sense. So B has a greater dipole. 
Which one's going to be the more reactive acid? Y A. What orbital? What bond are we looking? At? What, so we're talking about acids. If I say generally acids, I'm talking about bronzed acids. So what what bond are we looking at for reactivity? The OH bond, right? The OH bond. How is chlorine affecting that OH bond? Induction. So what's indu what's important about induction? What affects induction? Electronegativity and how close it is, right? So induction is all about electronegativity, and so are dipoles. So again, are you sure you are you sure A is the most acidic, most reactive acid? No. no. Which one's the more reactive acid? B is right because fluorine pulls more. Right? If we're talking about induction, fluorine pulls more than chlorine can, right? Fluorine's more electronegative. What so if this, they were, like, spread so, out well, yeah, but see, notice right. So what's what's the same? So. There are how many carbons away from this OH? So this is the, right, from this H we're one, two, three, four bonds away. One, two, three, four bonds away, right? So the distance is the same, right? Because distance away does matter. So if that's the same, then it's only about electronegativity, right? And if there's two, two fluorines, it would pull more than one fluorine, right? I would never get you in the case where you have two chlorines versus one fluorine and try to figure it out, right? That's... Right, you wouldn't be able to do that. So this is not only has the greatest dipole, it's also the most reactive acid, right? Because what's affecting reactivity, right? And induction, right? Reactive acid, electronegativity, induction. Good. Okay, so now that we've talked about dipoles and reactive acids, we decided Bs are more reactive acid. Let's focus in on B. We'll shrink this stuff down, get this out of the way, and let's have B here, right, react with a base. So what's a good base? NaOH. Well, let's do something easier. That's a little, well, let's do, let's do trimethylamine, right? Nitrogens are good bases, right? We have a lone pair. Does nitrogen hold on to its lone pair very tightly? At least relative to oxygen, if you look at the periodic table, nitrogen doesn't hold on to its lone pair very tightly, right? That's why it's a good base, because it's reactive, right? So that's where electron density is at, right? So that's where we're, where we're going to start our arrows, at electron density. It attacks the H. The two electrons in this OH bond go where? <coughs> to the oxygen. Equilibrium arrow, because it's an acid-base reaction. So let's finish, let's draw these out. Give myself a little more space. So we always need to remember we need to balance charge. So there's an OH. There's that fluorine. Does it matter which like, hydrogen you attack? It does. Which one's more acidic and why? Why why did I pick this H and not this H? Is it because um, that was part of the way from like the fluorine, so like there's less pull to it or not? No. There's more oxygen. If you if you had a if you were close to the fluorine, you'd think you'd have a weaker bond, more reactive bond. Yeah. But what else does this have going for it versus this OH? Yeah. They're both OHs. Yeah. Resonance. Resonance. This one, the product can have resonance, right? We have a negative charge here, we can spread that out. Also, there's more induction, right? This is, this is near that other oxygen is pulling it away, right? Versus this OH, right? right? This is the carboxylic acid part, right? So the product, right, let's, I kind of give it away here. There should be a negative charge here, and that's a nice stable product because of resonance delocalization, right? You can move these electrons, right? and spread that negative charge up over different elements. What am I missing? Balance. Plus charge, I didn't balance that charges, right? Where should there be a plus? Nitrogen. The nitrogen, very good. Plus charge there, absolutely. Okay, so I forgot to record. So, if you're given this problem right here, and you're shown this structure, I want you to look, your eyeball will be there, and I want you to show you it looks down from one to two. It is exactly as shown. 
So if you were to take this and draw it to a Neumann projection, this is what the Neumann projection should look like. So as you look down your eyeball, right, as you're looking here, up into your right, on your right hand would be a fluorine. That's why you want to draw a fluorine there. Up into your left should be an OH, and then straight down would be an H. Now as you extend that back to carbon 2, as you extend it back to carbon 2, up into the right again would be an iodide. Notice the fluorine and iodide are eclipsed, but I want you to draw it exactly as it's shown. Up into the left, on your left hand would be a bromine, so that's on the same side as the OH, right? If you look at this, the OH is hatched and the BR hatched, so they better be on the same side, right? In this case, they're eclipsed on the same side. And then the CH3 is straight down, so that's going to be eclipsed with the H, right? Biggest problems you'll make on this, people forget to put all the stuff that's on carbon 2 or on carbon 1, right? They start losing carbons off these substituents. That's the biggest problem people make, right? But if I ask you to show us exactly as shown, Make sure you draw exactly as shown, so this is an eclipse confirmation to be high energy. And of course, you can use your model kits to help you with this. Right, good thing to remember is, right, if I, I could show you the new projection, you should be able to take this and draw exactly this as well. You should be able to go either way for a starting material.